Okay, this is the second uh, video in the efficiency series. Again, I think there will end up being four. And this is the math behind efficiency so that you can code it yourself. And yeah, I believe this could be used for either detection or um, estimation, but I will be focusing specifically on detection um, in the next video. So make sure you're ready for this. Uh, please make sure you know the difference between estimation and detection. And if you don't, just go and video back and have a look. So I'm just gonna jump right into this. Um, the math behind efficiency. So I think of efficiency as kind of a poor person's power calculation. Um, not that we're poor, but maybe we're data poor. You can think of it that way. In order to run a power analysis, you need pilot data. And we typically don't have pilot data. And if, even if we do, um, actually if we do, that, that's great. Um, right, so typically uh, the efficiency calculation comes into play because you're designing a study and you basically know what you want to do, but it turns out that simply reordering your stimuli, stimuli according to the types can have a big impact on the ability with which you can estimate the signal. I'm sorry, detect, I, mean, well, I said estimation, now I'm, I'm, I have to be careful about saying estimation and detection, but basically the efficiency with which we can, <laughs> I can't get around to estimate or detect our signal. And this is based on our friend, the T statistic, which if you go back to the regression series, I covered this. Um, this is our T statistic for any linear model you have for some contrast C. So beta hat is the uh, vector of parameter estimates. C is the contrast that pulls out the um, hypothesis that you're interested in studying. So if you're interested in faces minus houses, that C will pull out faces minus houses. And then in the denominator, uh, there are, I see it as two chunks. We have this chunk here, which is the variability due to the design matrix. And this chunk here, which is the residual variance. And we actually focused a lot on this earlier when we were improving our level one models. That's when we looked a lot at this T statistic. And there we were looking at how we could reduce the residual variance. Well, now we're in a situation where we don't even have data. So kind of doesn't matter what the residual variance is. We don't have that to work with. Um, nor do we have um, this part. So we did think about how can we increase the statistic, and this is before we've collected our data. So this thing, yeah, if we could increase this, that would be awesome. So if you know how to make your subjects have a larger response to the task, go for it. Um, that's not a statistical problem. Um, either it's stimulating or it's not stimulating. So this isn't something I'm focusing on here. That's more in your your playing your your uh, your field than my field. This part, as I said, we don't have data, um, and we can just assume that in the future we're going to run the best model possible. So we can't change it now. We're just going to assume it's as good as it's going to get. But we can focus on is this part right here. All the only two ingredients are the contrast that we're interested in and the design matrix X, which you don't need data to construct a design matrix. You just need to know your stimuli, your stimuli, the onsets, and the ordering of your stimuli. So since this is the only thing we can control before the study, um, let's try to reduce the variance contribution from the design. So we're gonna reduce the chunk that's circled in red here. And we call that um, the efficiency. So the efficiency for a contrast, C beta hat, is one over that chunk. So basically, I took the T statistic and I just got rid of this part and this part. And you're left with efficiency. So our goal is to get the highest efficiency. Um, and that will hopefully lead to the best statistic possible. Okay, so does that make sense? Make sure that makes sense to you. If not, you know, pause and think about it for a second. All right, so C has to be a vector. I'm, I'm not working on efficiency for an F test. That would be when C is a matrix. And yeah, that's it. So that has to be a vector. So here's the math behind the efficiency. 
So you would calculate, if you have multiple contrasts, which is likely going to happen, you're going to have three or four stimuli. So you could calculate this efficiency for each one, but then what do you do? So, right, you could calculate C X transpose X inverse C transpose for each contrast of interest. And I'll just tell you a really common mistake that I make just about every time I code this up from scratch is I forget to invert this. Don't forget to invert this. Um, yeah, otherwise you'll be confused why your efficiency is not improving. Okay, so what you can do then is average them together. So you would just take the sum divided by three if you had three contrasts of, in, of interest, and then you could use the inverse of that as your efficiency. This is known as A optimality, but there are other options. So there's a paper, um, I'm forgetting the first author, I, I don't mean to be rude, but I know it was uh, somebody who worked with Nicole Lazar, and they had a really cool paper, and it went through all the different A optimality, and um, I think there's one called D optimality, but different ways to optimize your study design. And a cool thing about the approach that they worked on was I think they also took into consider consideration different psychological aspects about the stimuli. I don't recall. Um, anyway, we'll get there. I have some examples about that work later. So our goal is to maximize the efficiency. Um, so basically what you do is you come up with a bunch of candidate design matrices. So you might be wondering, well, how do I come up with different design matrices? And it's typically really simple. So I had somebody who had a really simple task where um, sentences were read aloud and then the subject gave a response. So all we did was reorder, we tried all different, there, I think there are four sentence types. Um, and so we randomly ordered the sentences and you could do that so many different ways, thousands and thousands and thousands of ways. And I basically just randomly ordered them and let my loop run for a really long time and um, just crunched the efficiency for probably, I don't know, 20,000 designs. And then I took the ones with the most efficiency. So that's basically what you do. There are more, there are smarter ways to go about it. And I'll talk about that in probably the fourth efficiency lecture. Of course, make sure um, you're maximizing the correct efficiency. So if you're uh, trying to estimate the HRF shape, that means you want to uh, maximize efficiency for um, HRF estimation. Or you could maximize efficiency for detection, which would uh, go along with a convolved regressor. This would have something to do with the FIR model. Or you could maximize the efficiency detect, to detect a contrast between two trial types, which would probably be, a um, again, using HRF convolution, but um, a different type of contrast. So you just have to figure out which of these you're interested in. And you have to be careful. There are software um, packages out there, like um, OpSeq is a great one because it's really easy to use. But the type of efficiency that's estimating might not be the type of efficiency you're interested in. And as far as I could tell, looking at it, it's, it's um, maximizing the efficiency for estimation, not detection, where most of us use the, a model for detection, the HRF convolved regressor. We aren't using an FIR model. Um, I'll look into that more and I'll show you guys OpSeq later, but um, yeah. So make sure you have all that. Uh, what is efficiency related to? It's, it's basically the chunk of the variance we can look at. So um, yeah, I spoiled that one, but that's the answer. And if you know your design matrix, do you think you could code up efficiency? I'm gonna spoil this one too because I'm going to have a MATLAB example next time. It is by no means a, <laughs> a design I would recommend using, but it's an easy design so we can wrap our heads around this thing and then it's good starter code for your own efficiency calculations. And then you can just do it yourself and then you don't have to worry about what the software is doing inside because you have all the control. All right, thank you very much. Please join the Facebook group, follow on Tumblr or Twitter. The links for all that are in the description box. And most importantly, have a great day. Thanks.